I was recently given this paper from the American Bible Society uh, to show me that the King James Bible is just one of many Bibles and and uh, it's just a ridiculous bunch of lies on here very typical of Alexandrian modern textual criticism uh, Roman Catholic is really what who's behind these new versions but uh, I want to show you in more detail this thing because it's just it's just ridiculous so let's take a look at this all right here you can see the chart of the English Bible let me zoom in a little bit here so we can get a little bit more detail here we have Hebrew Old Testament and Greek New Testament now right away you see an error there because they're only showing you that there's only one Greek New Testament only one Hebrew Old Testament and they go on to produce all these versions not true as I've shown many times you have Nestle Lalonde you have Textus Receptus there are two Greek texts there's not just one and there are you know multiple editions of both of these there's United Bible Society's text Jardy text I mean there's many 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 Greek New Testaments so right there deception number one okay so then you have it comes down here and they say about the third through th second century BC Septuagint Greek Old Testament again they lie that's not true you can study that thing out the whole thing of the Septuagint the, the early Christians used a Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures I'll show you that a little bit more detail on that in just a minute or two here then it goes down to Jerome's Latin Bible okay Greek New Testament comes here and it goes right over there to Jerome what about the Waldensians where are they at how do they factor in here oh well they're not mentioned so in other words the very first group to have the Bible according to the American Bible societies or society is the Roman Catholic Church that's a lie taught by Roman Catholicism that the Catholic Church gave us the Bible not at all true then it goes down here to Wycliffe's Bible and then over here to Martin Luther and then Tyndale and then you get down Coverdale Great Bible Matthew's Bible Geneva Bible they're all over the place here and the Bishop's Bible Dewey Reams the Jesuit Bible and that comes over here to the King James Bible and then you get down here you have some more Catholic ones and uh, from the King James Bible it goes down to the English Revised Version the American Standard Version Revised Standard Version New American Standard Bible New King James Bible and then you get all this godless depraved mess down in here Weymouth uh, Centenary, Centenary New Testament Phillips Barclay I mean all this stuff and see it's all now we have all these quote unquote Protestant things mixed in with Jerusalem and the New American Bible so Catholic and Protestant Bibles they're all the same it's just more modern updated King James Bibles see it's all just just one big happy family of Bibles the Catholic Bibles and the Protestant they all just kind of intertwine and they come down here to our mo new modern versions this is a total lie and this is a kind of junk that you're going to be taught in a seminary all right now let me just show you a couple more things in a little bit more detail here we have the thing about the Greek Septuagint it says the Old Testament was translated into Greek during the third and second centuries BC for Jews living outside of Palestine the name Septuagint Latin for 70 reflects the tradition that it was translated in Egypt by 70 elders in 70 sessions it became the Bible of the first generation of Christians to evangelize the Hellenistic world a lie this whole thing here is a lie uh, they claim that it was 12 Jews from each of the 12 tribes uh, or not 12 Jews, Jews it was uh, six Jews from each of the 12 tribes which of course is ridiculous that would add up to 72 by the way um, not 70 but also if you study the Old Testament you'll see that the scriptures were uh, to be kept by the tribe of the Levites and by nobody else so the other tribes would never have joined into making a translation in Greek that's stupid and you have Jesus saying not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled 
jots and tittles are Hebrew letters. Okay, they are not Greek. This whole thing here is a concocted lie put out by the Roman Catholic Church because they have to have their apocryphal books, which are part of the Septuagint, they have to have those to prove a lot of their warped doctrines. Okay? Study that thing a little bit more. Write me, I can give you more resources to study that. Um, and of course it goes down in here to the Greek New Testament. Um, and it talks about the Old Testament, you know, that they used the by the end of the second century, the Old and New Testaments in Greek were used by the church as a special group of sacred writings. They lied. Right there again. Here's your lie. Just ridiculous. Then you go down to the Vulgate Bible with Jerome. See? Starts out with the Catholics. Goes from the early Christians to the Catholics. You know, the church was founded upon St. Peter, you know, and he was the first pope. See, then it goes down to here. This is just Roman Catholic is all it is. This is not Christian. All right, these are lies that have been perpetuated by the Roman Catholic Church and now supposedly being, or being carried out by supposedly Protestant groups. Then it goes into John Wycliffe, then it goes down here to Martin Luther, and it says the Reformation brought a renewed demand for the Bible and the language of the people. Luther himself prepared the German translation, New Testament 1522, Old Testament 1534. This was the first Western European Bible, not based on the Latin Vulgate, but on the original Hebrew and Greek texts. The original Hebrew and Greek well, they didn't have the original Hebrew and Greek. And by the way, what was the Greek text that Martin Luther used? It was the Textus Receptus. It was not the Nestle's text that all the new versions are based on. But they don't tell the reader that. They just conveniently leave that out. And then again, they talk about Tyndale and the fact that he used the original Greek too and, you know, Right here you have it, translated the New Testament from the original Greek. They don't tell you what the original Greek was. The reader is left to believe, so you go down through Coverdale and all the other Bibles that were created up until the King James Bible, okay, and how it became the most popular English Bible. So they don't tell you what Greek text is used. It just goes from here, and you're left to assume that they had the original Greek, and so did the King James translators. And then you have the Roman Catholic versions that come out, and most of those are from the uh, Latin Vulgate. And then you come down here, later revisions and translations, it says, For more than 250 years, the King James Bible was supreme among English-speaking people. During the last 100 years, the knowledge from newly discovered manuscripts. Again, another deception. The readings of Vaticanus were available to the translators of the King James Version. They were available to Erasmus almost 100 years before the King James Version. And they were rejected because they knew of their corruption. And by the way, the majority, over 95% of the newly discovered manuscripts, line up with the Receptus, the Textus Receptus. This Nestle's text right here is based on less than 1% of the extant Greek New Testament manuscripts. But they don't tell you that. And of course then they go down through all the garbage that has been produced in the last 100 years, all the corrupt Roman Catholic Bibles. And that's what they are. This ridiculous piece of paper right here put out by the American Bible Societies is Roman Catholic propaganda designed to get you to get rid of your King James Version. That's all this is. It casts doubt. It covers up the fact that there are two Greek texts. There are two types of Bibles. That's so important for people to understand. You see, it's very unfortunate, but the truth is, this is what is being taught in most of our Bible colleges here in America. And it of course, you know, anywhere in the English speaking world, this is what's being taught. That this is the this is the truth here, that all Bibles are just, you know, you have older ones, you have newer ones. Total lies. And it's so sad to know that most Christians, this is exactly what they believe. And the reason for it is because their pastors are teaching them this.
They were taught it in seminary, and now they graduate, they get out, they get a church, and now they teach the people the lies of the American Bible Society and the Roman Catholic Church, if you want to boil it down to who's really behind this nonsense. Okay? Right here is your standard of truth. This thing is not just another Bible in a long line of Bibles. This is God's Word to the English-speaking people. Perfect without error. Okay? I can hold this thing up and say, God's Word says, and not be a hypocrite. Why? Because I believe it is God's Word. I can't say the same thing for this. This NIV is not God's Word. This is a satanic counterfeit. You say, oh no, it's, it's, it's a modern updated. No, they don't say the same thing. They contradict each other. One of them is God's Word and one isn't.